July has been such a big month for Pantheon that I wanted to get this video out. I, I've, I've been feeling pretty sick this past week, and uh, you probably hear, hear that in my voice and maybe even see it in my face, but this was a video that I wanted to go ahead and get out. So so let's let's kind of wait. You know what? This month is too big for for this for, for let me you know, I need to change. Better. OK, so since I had just had a bit of a graphics update, I guess that that will segue nicely into our July. And I know that some of you may think this stuff is cringy. I don't I like it. I think it's cool. So please don't be mean to me in the comments because it'll hurt my feelings and I'll cry tonight. I'm serious. So July for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen was one of the biggest months we've had in a while. First, we had the very big reveal and some interesting new information in the newsletter. An exciting new hire that may be familiar to a lot of you. A feast for the eyes in the developer live stream. And a uh, very special interview. Okay, so, hi, this is me from the future, feeling a little bit better, and um, a lot has changed in, in the day between when I recorded yesterday and, and today with the, uh, the the stream from our friend, Co Carnage. You, um, you're gonna, you're gonna want to stay until the end of the video. We've got a pretty big update on alpha and pre-alpha. And I think you can say that uh, my my prediction that July was going to be a very big month for Pantheon. Yeah, it's 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 playing out that way. And um, I might have to eat some crow. <coughs> the big highlight of the newsletter will without a doubt be the announcement of a new private two point four million dollar investment in Pantheon bringing their total investments up to 5.34 million. Now this sum does not include money brought in through crowdfunding pledges from people like me who pledged a couple years ago. And speaking of pledges, in celebration of this, they've added a new pledge package that includes pre-alpha access for $750. This is $250 less than the previous lowest tier pledge to grant this pre-alpha access, which cost $1,000. Now granted, this is a lot of money to pledge towards a game, but keep in mind, you are not paying this amount of money just for access to the game. You are paying this amount of money to support the game. I would not go into this expecting to have this like special sneak peek at the game. That's not really what this is for. If you ever tested a game before, it can feel like work. I tested EverQuest 2, I tested Star Wars The Old Republic, I tested Star Wars Galaxy. There's a lot of games I tested and I can't remember having fun in any of it. But I am glad that I was able to at least give my feedback. The next pre-alpha test is still slated for summer. But as we're running out of time for a traditional summer, could this mean that pre-alpha test might be done in August? <coughs> next month? On the less positive side of things, you remember from my six months of Pantheon video, one of the things I was looking forward to in the July newsletter was seeing the network overhaul tip over to complete on the road to alpha list. However, it remains in progress, but it has at least been updated. Core integration of vinyl has been completed and they continue to address minor bugs. We did, however, get an unexpected complete on the road to alpha with banks. Not to be outdone by the 2.4 million other reasons, Pantheon unveiled how death will work in Terminus. This has been a hot topic for many with a not insignificant portion of the fans wanting harsher penalties more akin to games like EverQuest. And it sounds like they'll be getting their wish as the proposed penalties for dying may make you at least a little more cautious. First was the near death state. This is what happens when you're reduced to zero hit points, triggering a smaller health pool. The near death state that was mentioned reminds me of Guild Wars 2, but there's an interesting quirk here where in the near death state you'll drop to the bottom of your mob's hate list. So if you're solo, yeah, you're still fucked. But in a group, this means your DPS who pulls aggro and enters a near death state can now argue it's the best aggro drop. It's like feign death, but for real. I actually like this a lot because there are multiple times when a bad round would end a tank, a DPS, or healer, but the group would ultimately triumph. That moment of joy, though, was ruined by the struggle of getting that fallen member of the group back. 
This seems like a system that will reward when a group can scrape out a victory from the jaws of defeat. But what happens when you slip from near death to full death in Pantheon? In short, players will lose experience and potentially their level, as well as taking durability damage to their equipped gear. Unequipped gear, with a few exceptions, will remain on your remnants, the decaying physical form where you died. If you recover your remnants, you'll not only get your unequipped gear back, but also what sounds like a temporary experience buff for experience lost. For those, like myself, who might have been concerned about how this would work in a raid setting, have no fear because resurrection will immediately restore a portion of the lost experience. And last on this death penalty, Pantheon appears to be taking into consideration the potentially unrecoverable corpse with the implementation of in-game faction, the Eternum, who may be willing to summon unfaded remnants or even retrieve equipment from decayed remnants for you. For a price. As they put it in the newsletter, they have commodified the laws of death and resurrection on Terminus. Bring out your dead. For the dev stream, there are really two major updates that I want to highlight here. It was one of the better dev streams in a while. One of the big reveals was the transition showing the early HDRP mountains in the new vision with obvious visual improvements. See? See? There, there was a reason for this. It, it wasn't it wasn't just getting dressed up so that I could justify my Amazon purchases to my wife. The big differences was how the mountains areas had been reshaped into a sort of terracing style. In this stream, they doubled down on the climbing and openness of the world. Every time I hear of climbing in Pantheon, my mind clicks over to EverQuest 2 with their linear climbing paths, which while still revolutionary at the time, often felt unnecessary. I like the approach that Pantheon is taking here when, where climbing is sounding more and more in integral to the game from gathering to expiration. The second major update is a team member. Steve Clover, who was hired on as a senior programmer and has already put in work on the bank system and the death system. If you're unfamiliar with the name and why so many fans of EverQuest and Pantheon were so excited, Steve Clover is the co-creator of EverQuest. Steve Clover, Brad McQuaid, and Bill Trost are all credited with the original design of EverQuest alongside John Smedley. Clover is an industry veteran and one who was tied so closely to the brilliance that was EverQuest in the early years. Clover and McQuaid both left EverQuest by 2002. Beyond the expertise Clover will bring, for me it's, it's just a nice thing to see. Clover had worked with Brad McQuaid as far back as 1988, and Pantheon Rise of the Fallen was McQuaid's hope for the future. There's something poetic in that hire. The interview with Co Carnage was great. And I want to talk about Ko for a moment before before we get into it, because I've talked about him briefly before. I've talked about him on Twitter, but Ko Carnage was a creator that kind of inspired me. Ko Carnage is a lot of the reason why I'm here, not just here as a content creator, but also here as in making videos about Pantheon, because Ko Carnage has been a supporter of this game for a very long time. And I think that this was the very first gameplay footage I ever saw of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen was from Co Carnage. Now, Co Carnage and his playthroughs helped me through a difficult time in my life. Helped me through a time when I was struggling a little bit and, and needed some fun, some entertainment, some comedy. And he provided it. He provided it when I ran out of Netflix shows and I ran out of Hulu and things like that. He was there and I appreciate him very much for it. It's kind of a goal that I have set for myself. But this is not what this video is about. This video is about his interview on Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And some of the big reveals we got. Some that I was ready for. Some that I wasn't. Now, it could be argued what the biggest announcement is of this stream. And there's two huge ones that are official and, and really probably what we should be focusing on and not the things that were mentioned in passing. But we'll also focus on the things mentioned in passing because they're pretty damn big. But the big thing was that Co Carnage is officially an investor in Pantheon. Not a backer. Not a backer like me. An investor. You know, like with real with money. Investing in the project. This, I believe, out of everything, including all the streams that Co Carnage has done for Pantheon, all the free publicity, so to speak, that he has done for the game, shows just how much he believes in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And he had a bit of a mic drop moment at the end of the stream regarding another announcement that we got. 
Co-Carnage will be streaming Pantheon in September. The pre-alpha version of Pantheon in September of this year. So really just about two months away. Maybe. We don't have a date in September. It could be early in the month. It could be at the end of it. But he'll be streaming it on his channel in September. Now, why is this a mic drop moment? Well, he's streaming the game. The game can't be actual vaporware if he actually plays it. Because vaporware refers to something that is, is not there. It, it cannot be purchased. It cannot be... It's just, it's still in the design phase. Essentially, that would mean that it is not playable. You could not go drop $750 and play it. Co Carnage will be playing it and streaming it. I'll back off because I know a lot of you will get frustrated with me for this, but the terminology does get to me sometimes. Talk all you want about whether you believe it'll be released or not. I still believe in this project, and obviously so does Ko since he has invested in it. When he mentioned that he was going to be playing it in September, he did mention that this would be the first time he'd play it on stream. This may have raised some eyebrows because he has played Pantheon on his channel before. There's videos of it. There's videos of it on his and on the Pantheon YouTube. And we know he played the evaluation build. We also know that he's always had devs with him. What I'm wondering is if this means he'll be able to just log in and do whatever the hell he wants. Not a dev stream, a co-stream. Personally, that's something I'd love to see. Ko's enjoyment of games is part of what makes him so much fun to watch. And just seeing him fumble around like a little baby fawn in Pantheon would be just so much fun to see. Just, just let him get lost a lot. Let him fall off some things. Let him, let him find out if the new near-death state works. Let him test. Just let him go. Let him experience. And, and then maybe invite me to play too. I'll, I'll fall off some cliffs for you. I'll, I will test your fall damage. Pantheon devs, if you're, if you're, if you're watching, I am, I am very good at finding ways to fall off cliffs in games. I, I'm your man. Ko and his community asked some pointed questions of Chris Rowan and Chris Perkins, and we were rewarded with some beans. And before the big reveal, I want to kind of go over some of those smaller revelations that we got that may still be interesting to a lot of you. We found out the team working on Pantheon consists of about 35 people, with some working part-time. This was equated to about 24 full-time staff. Recent investments completed their Series A3 funding, all of course from accredited investors. The ability to fill in human presence game-wide with their human kit is also almost done. I bring this up because I think it shows one way that they can both show cohesion throughout the world, but functionally also increase the speed with which they can fill out the world of Terminus with these kits. The game is currently running on vinyl, with some glitches which are, were to be expected and are being worked on. They're shifting over to content production now, so to me that means they're shifting over to filling out the world, while they on the, the back end fix any of the glitches or bugs or things that are happening with the network. For this last one, take these numbers with a grain of salt as it was really mentioned in passing, but it was said offhand that there are currently a few thousand pre-alpha testers and tens of thousands of potential alpha testers. Just to give you an, an idea of how many people are wanting to get into the world and have backed it at those levels. But now, we have to move on to the big reveal. And, and perhaps the most unexpected of the stream, if you're me. And just a month ago, you came out and said with 80% confidence level, that Alpha would be in 2022. If you stared at the, at the camera, smiled, and believed in your, your own optimism, and then you sat there during the interview and you heard this. So on that note, talking about the pre-alpha access and things like that, how many more pre-alpha sessions are you thinking? There's going to be several more pre-alpha sessions uh, throughout this year and uh, into, into next year into into next year so now i've updated my 
confidence ranking for Alpha in 2023 to 10 of 10. My name is Redbeard Flynn. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. And if you're looking for a game to spend some time in while you wait for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen to release, why not take a look at this video here? Thank you so much for hanging around and have a great day. See you again next week.